I'm here to talk about using finite deterministic automata for string matching. Now we've already looked at the naive string matching method, the Knopf, Morris and Pratt method for avoiding backtracking, and the Boyer, Moore and Horsepool method to reduce uh, comparisons even more and get quite a fast and efficient and practically efficient algorithm. But those all three all have, uh, they all share a problem, which is that they can only match and only work with finite uh, static patterns, and that any kind of ambiguity or infinite or recursion or even just variance uh, is beyond their scope to deal with. And that's where finite deterministic automata come in. Uh, now these are typically defined as pentuples uh, with the f made up of these five, uh, defined by these five uh, properties which I will explain now. Uh, firstly, there is a set of states that the automata can be in and uh, this, uh, these will correspond to every state that the automata will move into or trying to match as it running through execution. Then there is an initial state, which is obviously a member of the, to of the total step. Uh, then there is an accept state, which is also a, well, there are an accept state or, mu or multiple accept states, uh, which are a subset of the total states and uh, are the points in the automata's execution where it will recognise uh, the pattern within the language that it's been given and approve it and accept it. Then there is the alphabet uh, of the, which will be of symbols, on in this case characters, from which languages that the automata may accept or will attempt to, to accept or recognise can be built. And finally the transition function which will be uh, which will be in the size area of uh, the alphabet times the states because it's obviously it has to, for every state it has to move be able to transition to another state or stay where it is, or at least react for every symbol in the alphabet. And that's actually something I'll come back to later because that is uh, one flaw or one uh, detraction from finite deterministic autonomy that uh, when formally defined by specification they have to be able to respond in each state to any possible uh, symbol in the alphabet, which obviously for large alphabets can be quite a problem and add a huge deal of overhead and complexity. Uh, as an example of what we'll talk about in this short lesson, uh, these represent a, uh, a small subset of regular expression behaviour, but I'm going that these are the, the things I'm going to show how to model with find out deterministic autonomy. Obviously there's literal matching, which is obviously just pretty much similar to any of the other string matching methods. Then we start to get some ambiguity and some possibility for recursion uh, with the plus postfix symbol, which is we're interpreting as meaning one or more repetitions of the symbol preceding it, and uh, the star, which is zero or more, and then just the dot, which will be any symbol accepted. Now, the here is a simple example of a finite deterministic autonomy that will match A, B, A, pl plus. And as you can see, here is the, is the language that, that I'm uh, submitting to it, and it will accept this language. Uh, eventually, it will it will dis not to match the first four characters, but it will match the last three, and I'll run through its execution in the side in a second. But uh, 
this is an example of what the automaton will look like when uh, drawn as an abstraction outside code. I've highlighted uh, two points of interest I'll go to later. But basically converting that into code, you will basically, for the naive approach uh, to string matching converted to this form, we, you will basically have a loop trying to match it and controlling the state and we keep on uh, occurring to the, to the transition function. So a continuous loop until either their language has been exhausted and will be rejected as a whole or until a sex state is accepted or depending on the purpose of the search function a sex state is accepted and there's no more symbols to process. Now, as you can see, we start in this path of execution. We're starting at uh, at an initial state, which is meaningless in regards to the pattern I just designated zero here. And at each as each uh, symbol is uh, read, the initial state will be replaced by the transition function into a new state. As you can see, passing through the first four, we move to A, but then we and then we move to AB, but then we can't move any further, and we're actually thrown back. Uh, in this case, I've named I've named the states in relation to the pattern for but it is that that's uh, just something I've done for ease of human recognition. That can be named anything or have any representation. But you can see after we've uh, got to the f after we got here after the first four symbols, and it the, the pattern can recognise a uh, the last three as the pattern. And if the language kept on repeating A, it would also still recognise it. And as you can see, I've highlighted uh, B there because this is quite interesting. Because you, if without this, the deterministic finite automata would just be modelling the naive method. But I'm showing that although it's hard to get this by automotive pr procedure and automatically generate finite autonomy by hand or by particularly clever algorithms, you can implement autonomy which do try and eliminate backtracking and so can emulate more advanced and more efficient algorithms. Which is why for most finite automata, the big O, the worst case complexity of matching, is uh, basically n, but that can be improved. Uh, I'll talk about complexity and the pre generation later. But uh, I'll sort of talk about the star and the dot symbol here. The star is very easy to model with automata, it just means it's just a case of maintaining the state. However, a problem with finite deterministic autonomy, which can be addressed by using other models of computation, such as non-deterministic finite autonomy, is that with an ambiguous symbol such as, such as the dot, you have to split off, which can basically lead to an exponential growth of states. Now, this can often be optimised away by hand, but it's very hard to do it automatically. But again. I haven't written down the execution for here just for time, but you can see that uh, that this uh, that's, this uh, autonomy will accept the pattern there, and also but it also has to include a lot of cases to reject it as well, which is another flaw of the. Uh, well, not necessarily a flaw, but is another thing which can lead to inefficiency and extra overhead of code and complexity with deterministic finite automata. And interestingly, you can see there are two except states here. 
because uh, it has to accept the pattern a a any number of a's b or a a any number of b's b or a b b because uh, of the ambiguity introduced by the dot character and basically that's uh, just going over it very briefly but that's scratching the surface of finite or deterministic finite anonymous for string matching and I think that's quite that's a good way to to look at the beginning because basically you would only use them to get sort of the ambiguity and regular expression behavior because typically uh, they're quite expensive to set up in the beginning you because the transition function as I said earlier is the alphabet the whole alphabet which uh, can be quite large, which in most cases would be quite large, it would be at least 26, but probably more in, ac in practicality, times uh, the constant arbitrary to the machine, and then uh, the expected runtime would average only be n. So it's uh, doesn't, it isn't very, it isn't, wouldn't be your first choice if you had other options, but it is quite a good, quite easy and simple to implement way of getting that complex ambiguity and, and uh, behaviour that you can't get from uh, other string matching methods. I briefly talked about how other variances of uh, this computation model, such as non-deterministic fine algorithm, can be used uh, to model uh, the behaviour I've shown and the more complex regular expression functions and uh, that is uh, basically all I'm doing now because I have an exam tomorrow. Thanks!